Are we good? Yeah, we're good. Okay. We're good to go. Hey guys. Um, I'm Aaliyah, so I've met most of you, but some of the parents haven't met you before. Um, I'm a physiotherapist from Proform Physiotherapy in Bella Vista. Uh, so I'm going to start off with just talking about my injury history uh, as a gymnast when I was an elite gymnast. So back when I was 14 and I was competing um, as a WAG gymnast, I was competing as a uh, junior international gymnast and I was suffering from some right-sided heel pain. This had been diagnosed as severs and I was suffering this for uh, suffering for a really long time. And this was a time when I was sort of vying for uh, selection for my first international competition. So it was a really important time in my career. Um, and this pain that I had was affecting my training. I was unable to, to run or jump or tumble or land without pain. And it actually affected my competitions. I wasn't actually able to compete floor and vault at that time, sort of during that year. Um, and just mentally it was really affecting me as well. So I got to a, a competition down in Melbourne and I was competing and I was uh, really upset. I was really distressed and my mum was pretty worried. And there was actually a, a physio there um, on the floor that wasn't my regular physio. So I was already receiving sort of physio treatment and been advised to take Voltaren and ice my heel, but this physio treated me a little bit differently and she got me to be able to compete pain-free, which was really great. So my mom um, was so thankful that someone was actually able to figure out what's going on with my pain. She took me to see this physio and um, I went into the clinic and the first thing that she did was got me to walk, walk down the hallway and had a look at how I was walking. And immediately she, she recognised that my, my right leg was sort of internally rotated and my kneecap was pointing sort of inwards. And she said to my mum, she's like, oh, it's not coming from her heel, it's probably coming up from her, from her hip. So she um, immediately taped my, taped my thigh, which I thought was pretty weird because I'd been taping my heel for, for a year. She taped my, my thigh into external rotation, so she sort of turned it out a little bit and instantly I had um, relief from my pain, which was super exciting. Um, and I guess the, the biggest sort of um, message in this was that I was just so frustrated as an athlete. Like all I wanted to be able to do as an athlete was be able to compete and, and show off all those skills that I trained so hard for. And it's just such a hard time when you're injured and, and you're unable to do that. So if this injury had been picked up earlier, much earlier, I, I would have been able to avoid all of that, that um, time with, with pain. So I want to ask some questions, guys, and talk to the athletes first. So what's the most frustrating thing about injuries for you guys? Someone give me some answers. What do you feel frustrated about? Come on, guys. <laughs> yes. Okay. Excellent. Anything else? Anyone else? What about, does it affect maybe how you guys can work as a, as a partnership? So if some, one of you guys is injured, does it affect then how the others can train? Yeah. What about um, just training in pain and being in pain? Is that frustrating? Yeah, that's hard. But I think some of the, the, the biggest things too, so it's affecting your, your partnership, your training in pain all the time. Does it affect how you compete? Hands up if you've, if you've not been able to compete because someone in your, in your team has been injured. Yeah. Is that frustrating when, especially for maybe the other people also that are, are healthy and somebody, and somebody is, is, um, is injured? And what about coaches? What do you guys find as the most frustrating thing for, uh, about the kids being injured? Yeah, yeah. So that they want the best for you guys and it's really hard as coaches to sort of see you guys injured as well. And what about parents? What do you guys think is the most frustrating things about the kids being injured? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I guess it's hard for you guys to see your kids in pain as well and, and, and Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's sort of this balancing act, right? You know, you can't have them 
you want to make sure that they're training, you know, pain free, but then they can't stop training for too long, otherwise they lose these skills or they get deconditioned. So you can see that injuries is just such a big problem, not just for the athletes, but for the coaches and for the parents as well. Um, so what we're going to talk about today is um, that, so we're going to just, yeah, so we, what we've um, discovered at, at Proform is that we've sort of worked out um, a framework that we can go through. We've got three different steps so we can try and get on top of those injuries a little bit quicker. So step one we've got is that we want to detect um, injury risk early. So prevention is always better than a cure. Okay, so this means that we want to try and be proactive and get on, on top of things and sort of recognise things early. And then step two we've got is managing the injuries quickly. So this is more about urgency, so getting on top of things really quickly and not waiting before injuries progressed too far. And then step three is that we want to be making sure we're checking in regularly and this is more about frequency and consistency. So let's talk about step one. So we've got detecting um, injury risk early. So you can remember we went through um, a couple of months ago that athletes did a, a screening, an injury screen. And this was really important. We sort of uh, got some data that we were able to triage all the athletes into a low risk, a moderate risk or a, a high risk of injury. And so this is really important because not every, all the athletes need to be treated as a high risk. So if there's, you know, if we're finding that we've, um, you know, there's a, poor shoulder range or, or hip, something going on at the hip, that doesn't mean that they're at high risk of injury. It just means that we can note those things so that we're able to um, appropriately uh, uh, change things in their training. And so this is really important as it gives us really important data. So when we went through these screenings and we collected all the data, we found some common trends among the athletes. Uh, so we were able to assess 16 girls, which I don't know if that was everyone, I don't know if we assessed everyone that's here, most of you, um, and 10 of which were middles and bases or both, and six were tops. And so this is some of the information that we found. So if we're, we're looking just firstly at the bases and the middles, so we found that 60% of you guys were at low risk, which is good and 40% were at moderate risk of injury. And we didn't have anyone in the high risk category with the bases and the middles. And so if we look at what kind of trends that we found, we had 40% of um, the athletes had um, lower back pain on assessment. So that's specific assessments for the lumbar spine. We had 40% um, had decreased hip flexor length. So that's the muscles that sit um, at the front of your hips. Uh, we had 50% of the, of the gymnasts had uh, decreased shoulder flexion range. So the ability to be able to put your arms above your head and make sure that you're in a nice straight line, which is obviously pretty important if you're a base or your middle. Um, and 50% had poor control on a hinge and press. So that, that's the position that we did where we were in this landing position for a motorbike position. And we were checking about um, looking at uh, the gymnast's ability to be able to control their um, pelvis and ribs at the same time. Um, and then we had 70% didn't do very well on the single leg squat test, which most of you <laughs> were aware of, but we weren't so good at those. And then 90% um, didn't have uh, good enough an active straight leg raise, which is what we use to test your core strength. So that was where we had you laying on your back and you had to lift your legs up. And so we had specific criteria for that. So just 90% of the girls weren't, and, and boys weren't able to actually transfer load across their um, core muscles, which is pretty important for when you're lifting. So I'm going to grab a volunteer, Brookie. <laughs> so key things, we've got, all these, we've got all these numbers, but why are they important? This is the key thing that we've got to work out. So if we've got Brooke here, that's a base, that's going to show us her arms above her head in her position if she was holding Layla above her head. Okay, now, if she has decreased shoulder range, she's going to bring her shoulders forward like this. Now, first of all, if you're going to hold someone above your head, you need to be in a nice straight line, okay? Now, if you don't have enough shoulder range, your body's going to find a way... Hold on, I'm not there yet. <laughs> your body's going to find a way to compensate for that and, and make sure that you can get that person above your head. And so the way that you're going to do that 
is likely you're going to flare at your ribs and you're going to arch your back like this. And this places lots of pressure on your lower back here. And then if we look at the stats over there, if we've got 90% that also don't have adequate strength to be able to hold their, their core properly, that's going to cause some problems later on. So, and, and then also if we look at our decreased hip flexor length, that can also, so if we're in our position again, my demonstrator. No, in a good position first. <laughs> So this is a lovely position here. But if then we've got poor flexibility at the hip flexors, it means that she's going to be placed sort of in a bit of a tilt here at the pelvis, which also then can put pressure on the lower back. So all of the, this is not every athlete that had these um, particular things that we need to address. But if we've got sort of any one of those things, that can then contribute to, to pain um, later on. And the key thing too is that we actually had 40% of the girls at, at, and boys that already had lumbar spine pain on assessment anyway. So this is really important information. And you can see how this is really important for us to then relay this onto the coaches and the athletes as to how we can change their training. Um, thank you. That's beautiful. <laughs> um, okay, so now if we move on to the tops. So the tops had some slightly different, um, they've also got different requirements to the bases in the middle. So there was some slightly different things that I found here. Um, so 50% were, so this was only six of them, but yeah, 50% were at low risk. And then we had 30% at moderate risk. And we actually had one athlete at high risk. So um, that was just something to note. And then slightly sort of similar things, but slightly different. So we had 30% with um, lumbar spine pain on assessment, 30% uh, with decreased hip flexor length, 30% uh, with, with shoulder flexion range, so de decreased shoulder flexion range again. Um, we actually had a new one where we had 65% of them had hip joint pain on assessment. So that could be due to the fact that they're doing more splits or... Um, even doing your ring position or your arch position that could also put a lot of pressure through the hips as well. Um, and then similar things in that we had our um, single leg strength and the active straight leg raise that also needs work as well as with the bases and middles. Now, is there a top that would like to be a little demonstrator for me? Who wants to come up? Come on. Who's coming? Come on, Courtney, let's go. <laughs> All right, my friend, you're going to do a handstand. We might do it here. All right, you're going to do a lovely, beautiful handstand for me. I'm going to catch you, don't worry. Although I'm sure you can do it beautifully. Okay, now if we have a handstand, someone doing a handstand, and then if you had poor shoulder flex range, can you bring your shoulders forward? Yeah, so then we've got sort of shoulders coming forward in this position here. So come down. So not only does this create problems obviously when you're up at, and in a handstand but it also creates problems for the base and the middle because they are going to have to control that position as well so if we've got similar things where we've got sort of decreased shoulder range instead of that affecting the overhead position it affects the overhead position in a handstand instead does that make sense thank you thank you very much <laughs> but yeah so i think all of this information is really great for us to gauge because we can then adapt that and, and make sure the coaches and athletes understand how we can change training um, to minimise the risk of then potential injury. Sorry, sliding down. Okay, step two guys. So that was step one. Step two is we've got to manage our injuries quickly. And so in order to do that, we've got to adhere by these three C's that we've come up with. So number one, we've got a culture shift. So typically within gymnastics, our athletes are not so great at talking up to, speaking up to their coaches about their pain. Hands up if you get a little bit nervous <laughs> talking to your coaches about their pain. <laughs> Quite a few of you. What, what, why, do you, why do you guys get nervous about talking to your coaches? Excellent. Any, anyone else? Does anyone else have, what else do you get worried about? <laughs> Look how lovely she is. <laughs> okay, so, so fear, we're a bit scared. We're scared of, like, we don't want to disappoint. Anything else, guys? Is there anything else that you sort of get nervous about talking to your coaches about? Yeah? Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So all of these things are valid points and we've got to sort of try and change that so that we can create a much more comfortable um, and safe space for you guys to be able to talk to your coaches. Um, do you, what, as coaches, what do you guys find in terms of um, what would be helpful for you if um, like the athletes trying to speak up to you? But I guess, is there a time when they can come and talk to you where you might talk about it at the start of training yeah, or? Okay. Um, we, if we hear about it halfway throughout the training, it's a bit hard to modify anything because we've already started yeah. the training for the day kind of thing. Okay. So we, yeah, we would prefer them to speak up at the start just so we can make any modifications to their vision. Do you guys understand why that's important? Yeah, I think like as coaches, it's actually really challenging to program for all of you guys. So if they have the information early, it makes it also much easier. Do you guys feel, is that like in front of everybody when you guys, when you guys are in line up or, okay. Do you feel, is that, do you feel comfortable talking about your injuries in front of everybody else? No. Okay, so how, how do you think, if we, if we don't wanna talk about it in front of everybody else, how could you maybe talk about, like when would be a time when you guys could talk up? So Courtney, when would be a time when you could maybe tell Lauren or Caitlin about what you're feeling that day? Yeah, so like after, after lineup, you mean? Yeah, okay. So maybe that can be something that we can try and change in the gym. So if you, if you don't feel comfortable telling everybody about your injury, maybe you can go up and talk to the coaches afterwards just so that they are aware of that. That's really important, guys, because we want to make sure that we can try and change that culture of, of not speaking up. Why do you think it's important to tell your coaches? So they can modify your training? Yeah, and why is it important to modify your training? Yeah, that's it. That's good. Okay, so another another one of the C's is that consistency, which is sort of what we what we just spoke about. So having that regular time at training where we can talk up about our injuries or anything that's bothering us. And so yeah, every day in lineup, if that's a good time to talk about things uh, or afterwards, making sure that you're doing that. And then we also need clear communication, not just with the athlete and the coaches but also with your parents your parents need to understand if you're in pain Do, hands up if you tell your, your parents if you if you're sore after training yeah excellent sometimes I know I wasn't very good at telling my parents they'd ask me about it in the car and I'd be like oh Jim was fine so <laughs> it's really important that you're talking to your parents because sometimes your parents might also be able to talk to your coaches or they might then be able to talk to us as as physios as well. So it's not just communication between the athlete and the coach, but also athlete, coach, parent, and then any health professionals that are involved like physios as well. So all of that communication is really key so that everybody knows what's going on, okay? And that really makes it important so that we can then deal with any injuries really quickly, okay? All right. Last thing is just checking in regularly. So these are, as part of um, our um, involvement with SGAC, these are the types of things that we're going to be offering. So um, injury surveillance, which basically just means that's going to, um, there's going to be some times next year where, where um, uh, myself or, or maybe Sam uh, will also be in watching training and talking to the coaches about anyone that might have any injuries that need to be monitored. Um, so that's really important to just stay on top of everything. And then we're going to be doing some seminars next year just so that you guys can, can uh, understand your injuries a little bit better. Uh, and then also running some workshops. And so um, we're going to be working on um, talking about prevention and performance and making sure that we can help limit any of the injuries injuries that are coming up, okay? Now, let's talk about recovery, guys. Hands up if you know what recovery is. What's recovery? It's when you get a rest. Get a rest, yeah. Anyone else, what else do you think recovery is? Yeah. Yeah, get better from injuries, yeah. Anyone else? Anything else? No? <laughs> so let's talk about it. So recovery is rest, but it's also a lots of different things when we talk about recovery. So recovery might not just be recovery from injury, but it actually might be recovery is something that we need to have 
in our week all the time. So we're, when we're active and we're at training, you're training really hard, you need to be able to look after your bodies. So it's really, really important that we actually learn what to do in order to look after your body so you can perform better. So first thing is sleep. Hands up if you know how much sleep you should get per night. Yep, Tara? Eight hours. Eight hours, cool. Hands up if you actually get eight hours of sleep every night. Okay, a few of us. If we're less than eight, less than seven? Less than seven? Okay, that's good, that's pretty good. Why is sleep important? Yeah, good. What, what, and, and in terms of it's not just about resting, it's also like mental rest, is also physical rest. Yeah, so really important that you're getting enough sleep. Second thing, uh, recovery, is actually fueling your body. Hands up if you eat before you train and after you train. Yeah, good. And what kind of things do you need to eat in order to sort of fuel your body better so you can train better? No, no, yeah, Courtney? Protein, yeah, so protein's good for building muscle. What else have we got? Anyone else know? So we've got, we've got carbohydrates, they're really good for energy. We wanna make sure that we're fueling our body, especially before and after we train, because that's when our body's gonna be um, recovering from training, so really important. And then also, we wanna make sure we're staying hydrated. So our body's made up 60% water. So if you're not drinking enough during training, you know, that's gonna, that's gonna make sure, so when we're hydrated, we wanna make sure that we're sort of lubricating our joints, lubricating our body. So really important that we're staying hydrated. And then the last thing is active recovery. So when we talk about active recovery, that might be your mobility or stretches or rolling or hands up if you do any of that stuff at home, any like foam rolling or trigger ball work or anything. Yeah, great. How does that make your muscles feel the next day? Does it make you feel better when you do that? Yeah. And so when your muscles are working really hard, it's really important that you're, that you're doing stuff at home that might be active recovery, that might even just be like walking or it might be moving or it might be, you know, rolling out or doing trigger ball work. So that's stuff that you can do after training. Now, we're going to talk about um, your rehab. So most of you've got some things that we've given you to do um, from the screenings that we did. So who can tell me when an appropriate time to do your rehab would be? When is a good time to do your rehab? Yes. Before training? Before training? Yeah. Is there any other time that you can do your rehab? Do your exercises? After training. Yeah, we can do it after training. Yeah. Any other times? Yeah. Yeah, it could be that you have that you're doing it on a rest day or at home, um, but there's also t you can also do your rehab at training. But I think the key thing is that we don't want to be doing it instead of training. So your coaches are taking a really long time, like we talked about, to be able to program and and um, plan your your training. It's really important that we're make, respecting that and making sure that we're doing your rehab to be able to complement that. So who can also tell me why rehab is important? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So remember if we go back to the page before when we were talking about injury risk and we were talking about decreased shoulder range or decreased hip range or any of those things that we were talking about and how that can lead to poor positions in your skills and back pain. Yes. Oh, exactly. What a good answer. Well done. <laughs> so really key, there might be some things in our rehab program that might be programmed for before you do some skills, right? So we might say, okay, Brooke has tight shoulders and tight hips and she needs to release those things before she does overhead movements. So maybe she's going to do those beforehand. But there also might be some strength exercises that we've given you. And so sometimes they might be important to do before training and sometimes they might be important to do after training. Um, but I think the important thing is that when we're doing them during training, if there's sometimes, you know, where maybe one of your, your other teammates or your people in your tree or your pair are doing other sort of skill set skills, there might be some time where you can do your rehab exercises at that time. But I think the key thing is that we're not actually replacing our training 
with your rehab exercises. So your rehab and your physio, that should be there to actually support you. So it's there to support your training and not actually there to replace your training. Does that make sense? Yeah, so I think hands up if you've been able to come in a little bit early to training and do your rehab before training. Has anyone been doing that or been able to do that? Is that challenging for you guys to get in terms of are you coming from school and you're unable to get here? Okay. Perfect. Yeah, so I think that's really good because the coach is obviously thinking about how they can better um, get you to do your rehab at a more appropriate time. That's excellent. I think coming in sort of at those times, I understand when it's hard when you're coming from school and you don't have time to do your rehab, that's really tricky. And it might be that you have certain things that you have to do. So say it's one or two exercises for your shoulder range or your hip range that you can do. And then the other things maybe you can do after training. Yeah, does that make sense? Do, is anyone finding it really hard to do their exercises? Yes, no? Okay. Okay, cool. So numbers we need to maybe have a look at that. I think some of them are on there, but yeah. Oh yeah. That's good. that's that's good. <laughs> if it's making you fall over, you've got to get better at it. So what the water bag does is it creates it creates a um, an unsteadiness, right? So you think about when you are up in a skill and you're doing certain things or you're standing on top of somebody, it's not always going to be even, right? It's going to be wobbly. So when you're using that water bag, it's, it's trying to knock you off balance. Your job is to try and make sure that the water bag doesn't win. So that's if, you, if you're finding it too challenging, maybe you can, are you doing it on the floor where it's a bit soft? So maybe you can do it on a firmer surface. Maybe you can not shake the bag as rigorously. But your goal is to try and be able to do that with really rigorous shaking and on an unsteady surface and see if you can do it. I don't know, you're pretty clever doing all these skills. I'm sure you can <laughs> win against a water bag. But that's something that maybe we can look at. Um, but yeah, so I think with our rehab, we want to make sure that we're doing it daily. So it's really important. We want to make sure we're doing it before and after training. And it's really there to support you guys. So you want to make sure that you're learning as elite athletes, we're learning how to look after your body. So it's really important. So it shouldn't be Lauren or, or Caitlin's job to remind you to do your rehab. This is, should be something that you're doing in order to perform better. So, and this is only uh, the more that you're training or the higher the level that you get to, the, the, the more that you're going to have to look after your body and make sure you're doing appropriate recovery and appropriate rehab, you know, if that's something that you need to do. Some of you might not have things to do, but if you do have things to do, it's your responsibility to be able to, to do all of those things. Does anybody else have any other, like, um, uh, does it, like, are you finding it difficult or if there's any other exercises or anything that you're having trouble with or if there's anything that's too challenging? No? Any questions about the exercises? Yeah, any rehab, guys? Um, yeah. That might be something that you can think about and you can maybe ask me if, if you do have any questions. Um, okay, so now we've got a schedule. This is sort of our important dates for next year. Um, and at the bottom, we've got all of your um, competitions that are coming up for next year and, and what sort of time period they are. So we've got lots of things coming up at the start of the year. As you guys probably know, we've got your state trials and state championships and then you've got your trip to Vegas and then state team training all within that sort of first and then nationals right all up together. So really important thinking about then how with your training that's a lot of of extra load going through your bodies at this time so this is e an even more important time to get on top of this because if we start to get any sort of niggles or injuries coming up towards the start of of this um this comp season it's going to be you know we want to make sure we're getting on top of that quickly so then it doesn't affect all of those comps sort of in that first half of the year 
So this is a really good time to get into a good habit of doing all your rehab exercises, getting your recovery in. So it's not affecting all of those things that are coming up. Because then at the end of the year, we've, we've then got like a little bit of a break before you sort of have national clubs and potentially world championship trials. Um, and then on the top there, we've got sort of times when, when we as Proform will be in to try and make sure that we're staying on top of all your injuries. So we'll be coming into training sort of around April, June and August to make sure that, um, yeah, we're watching training and talking to the coaches and making sure that's happening, okay? Um, and then lastly, we've got all of our clinics sort of here. So because of this partnership with SJC, we've, um, we've got 20% uh, uh, off all of your appointments that when you guys come into the clinics. Um, but also we've actually got three different clinics. So with lots of you living sort of all over the place. I don't know if probably most of you are out this way, but um, we've got three different clinics. We've got one in Bella Vista, which is where I am full time. Um, and then at Minchinbury, which is much closer, obviously, to, to here, we've got Sam, who's been, um, came in and did the screenings um, with all the girls and boys. And then um, we've got a new clinic that's opened up in, in North Rocks as well. So for anybody that needs to come out to that area as well. Um, Okay, guys, well, that's all I had to say today. But um, do you guys have any questions? Parents, coaches, athletes, anybody? <laughs> yes. It's just, it's not for me, but I don't know if other people for their, um, their rehab exercises, I think some people don't know what it's supposed to be targeting. Like, Perfect. Or if they're doing it right, the right way to... Okay. Okay. Yeah. Is that that's um that's a really good question. Is, is, are you guys finding that? Does anybody else have finding that that they're not sure where they're supposed to be feeling it or? Yeah. Is there any exercises in particular that you're? Probably the Latin prayer stretch. Like I don't necessarily ah. feel it in my arms. I feel it more like in my shoulders. Yeah. Do you feel it in your armpits, like underneath in here, or is it more in the back of the shoulders? Yeah, it's more at the back. Yeah. Okay. So. Do you want me to, let's go through that. Okay. Is that a good idea? Let's sure. go through that. How about we use this chair? Okay. Who else has to do this stretch? Everyone thinks they have extra Yes, good. <laughs> okay, does everyone know where their lats are? Oh, close, <laughs> close, they're down here. <laughs> These big muscles that sit here. And why they're important is that actually when your lats are really tight, they actually limit your range overhead. So if you've got, tight, if you've got tightness through your lats, because your lats actually do this, this action. So when, when your lats are tight, they actually don't allow you to get overhead. So all of you that have tight, tight shoulders or you feel like you can't, you're a bit restricted through your, um, your shoulder range, this is a really, really important stretch to do before you're doing any sort of overhead stuff. So for handstands and for um, bases. So when we do this stretch, we're gonna, uh, how about I do it first and then you can do it. How's that? Okay. So we're gonna come down onto your knees and you've got your hands in sort of like a prayer position like this. Now, when I do this stretch, this is what I'm thinking about and what I'm feeling. So I'm making sure I'm in like an angry cat position like this. And then I'm sort of bringing my, my hips back towards my heels, almost like it's a tug of war, like someone's pulling my hips back. And then I'm trying to then relax my shoulders down to the floor. Key thing is that when you're doing this, Lots of you have probably done stretches like this where you've just like relaxed down into your shoulders like this. And when we do that, we're not actually targeting your lats. You're just sort of relaxing through your shoulders. It's not really doing as much as when we're doing this particular stretch. So you're obviously going to do this for us and we'll adjust it. Can you judge my technique? Love that. Okay, so show me what you've been doing. I do this and then I sort of just like... Just hang out there? And then I push myself down like I'll relax and then I'll like close it in. Yeah, so pull your ribs in. And then what you can actually do is actually hold like a something and bring your hands in a little bit closer because that's going to stretch your triceps a little bit more. And then I want you to pull your hips more towards your heels and then push your armpits down. Are you getting a little bit more of a stretch underneath your armpits? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so does that make sense? <laughs> Presto, now we've got a stretch. Yay! So you've got to make sure it's almost like, I like to explain it like someone's like a tug of war, like someone's trying to pull you and you're like, no, I'm staying here, I'm not going anywhere. So we really want to make sure that it's sort of that elongation through the, through the shoulders. 
And this is, if you can't, if you feel like you can't get this stretch, you can actually just roll it out. So you can roll out your lats as well. That might help um, if, you, if you feel like you can't, if anybody else feels like they can't get that stretch. Okay, beautiful. Any other questions, guys? I'm sure we have many. No? Any other problems with the exercises where you feel like you're not targeting? Was there any other exercises that you're struggling with? That's okay. Anybody else have any questions about any of the other exercises? I yes. Have one, just because I see some of the athletes have this one, but yeah. where they're like, you know, they're struggling with that against the wall. Ah, and yeah. It's too slow or fast. Can you kind of just like show yeah. how to do it? So, so when we're like, doing. Yeah, so this is more for like a thoracic range. So also important for overhead range. So if, if we've got tight shoulders and we've also got stiffness through our upper back, it's going to make it really hard for you to get your shoulders above your head. So this is really key for just movement through your thoracic. So when we're doing this one, you sort of want to come across the wall and we've got this opposite leg in front. And you can do this one, maybe what you can do is do it with a breath, okay? Because when you're breathing, that sort of takes a good amount of time. So you can breathe in as you rotate and you want to try and make sure that when you're rotating, you're rotating from your rib cage, not from your shoulder. So this is, I don't want to see anything like this with, with shoulders coming out like this. So we want to make sure we've got our, we're rotating and we're rotating through our rib cage to try and get almost like our goal will be to try and get your shoulder on the, on the back of the wall, but making sure it's not through the shoulder like this. And then when we're going this way, same sort of thing, we're coming around and coming back. But it might be that you do a breath in and you hold and then you do a breath out and you come back. Does that sound like it could be a good time frame if we do it with breath? Because I think I don't want you just doing like weird rotations and not doing anything. So we want, when we're doing these rehab exercises, there's no point doing them if we're not doing them with good quality. It's sort of like if you were training and you were doing any sort of, you know, how many presses do you guys do? You know, if you're just doing rubbish ones with bendy knees, that's not going to help us when we have to press on top of our partners. Okay? Does that make sense? So rehab's really important. We're making sure that we're doing the right thing. Yes, my friend. Um, how many of those do you do? Well, it might be that you do. So this is also teaching you about how you feel in your body. So it might be that you come in one day and you're feeling a bit stiff, you're feeling a little bit sore. So you might do more that day, okay? But I think as a rule of thumb, why don't we say that you do sort of like three to each direction. So you might just do three and then we go the other way and then we can go just straight across. So we might just do, you don't have to do too many of these, just making sure that you're feeling like each one, you're getting a little bit more range. Does that make sense? Yeah, I don't need you doing a hundred of those, so. Just think about this as just like a warm up. You know, if you were going to do a warm up like um, holding your splits and warm up, okay? So, how long would you hold that for? Similar. So, what other sort of stretches do you guys do to warm up? Like maybe like a hip flexor stretch if you're kneeling and you're doing sort of like range through there. How long would you normally spend doing that? I was actually going to ask that, but I don't know how long you do. Yeah, so let's think about this. If we're. We might just spend, like you might spend, do you guys hold your splits? Do you like splits for like a minute or something? Yeah, how long? A minute? Yeah. Okay, so maybe what you do is before that, you spend, you know, this is, this is how slow I'm doing this. It's not crazy slow. I might do 10 of these where I'm just trying to increase my range. The key thing is though, that you have to feel it. So it might be that one day you feel kind of stiff. It's your job to then notice that and be like, I'm going to do just a little bit extra. I feel like my body needs a little bit more. Than, than it did yesterday. And it might be that the day before, you're like, oh, I'm feeling really loose today. I don't need to do, you know, how many times do you sometimes come in and sometimes you can do splits and it feels great or sometimes it feels a little bit tight. Does that happen? Yeah. So maybe on those days where it feels a little bit tight, you might do a little bit more hip flexor stretching. Does that make sense? Yeah. And it might be that when you come in on Monday and you haven't trained on Sunday, that you might do a little bit more. But I think it's, that's, that's a key thing about understanding what your body is, is doing. And super key for when, you know, if you're, if you're holding someone overhead or you're doing something here, you need to understand what you're feeling in your body so that you can adjust and make sure that you're not going to be feeling sore the next day. Okay? Any other questions? No? Anyone? Parents, do you guys have any questions for me? No? Coaches, anyone? <laughs> no? So on the yeah, yeah. Uh, before and after training, you guys are recommending. 
I think it's more so there might be some things like um, that we might be doing before training. So say for things like, could be that um, you need to do some stretches before training in terms of like what we were talking about with Brooke, if there's like decreased shoulder range, decreased hip range, you wanna do that before you start training. Yeah. But it might be that you get some of your strength stuff done and not all of it and maybe you do some of that after training. Or it might be that you do all of your strength stuff before training and you feel good doing your stretches after training. So I think it's just dependent on if there's, um, if we've got sort of specific things going on, so if we've if some of the girls have come in and had treatment and we've said specific things like, I want you to do this exact thing before you start doing this particular skill, then that's when they should be doing those, those rehab exercises. But if they're just general things, they might just be doing that at the start of training or they might be doing it at the end of training, just more so either side, yeah. There might be some things that you guys like to do after training. Is there anything, you know, do you have a stretch down period after training where you might stretch down? So it might be that you do some of that trigger ball work or some of that rotation stuff after training. But yeah, I think like some of that stuff can be clarified and we can go through some more of that. Um, I can have a look and maybe say, do this one before training or after training or yeah, would that be helpful? Yeah. Do you feel like there's too many things that you're doing? Does anyone feel like there's too many things? No? You feel like it's achievable? Okay. Cool. Any other questions from you guys? Any coaches? Yes. There's so many water bag journals. Yes. That's a good question. Okay. So it might be with the water bag, we want to try and create adaptability. Okay, so you think about whenever you're lifting Layla above your head, every time you do that, it's gonna be different, every single time, because she might move a certain way, she might be you know, leaning forwards a little bit, you have to control her. That's exactly what the water bag, every time you lift up the water bag, it's gonna be a little bit different. E exactly, she might be tight one day. Maybe she, she wants to make it harder for you one day, who knows? So all of those things, yeah, every time you lift her up above your head or every time you throw her, it's gonna be slightly different to the time that you did it before. Um, never gonna be the same. And that's what we wanna create with the water bag is it's never the same if you're shaking it or if you're punching it, it's always gonna move differently. So when you're doing those variations, we, we might, this is where we can sort of play with that a little bit and it might be that some days you're doing shaking or some days you're doing fast punching, but you wanna create a, a, an exercise where you can fail at it a little bit. So if we can do sort of like eight, eight of those, um, say I've programmed you 10 to do 10, if you get to eight and you fall out, that's good, we know it's challenging enough. If it's too easy for you guys and you're doing it perfectly and you don't feel like it's working or that's too easy, you need to make it a little bit more challenging. So you can add to that. So it might be that instead of shaking it, you're punching it and you're putting it behind your head or you're trying to punch it out in front of you. That's much harder if you're putting it out here than it is down here. So there's different variations with those exercises and I think in the videos they go from easy to hardest. So there might be sometimes you can play with that a little bit. Does that make sense? Yeah. But that's things that we can also talk about. I can have a look and see if I can add a little bit of extra writing for you, okay? Cool. You're welcome. <laughs> um, any other questions? I forget the, the lunge shakes. Are you supposed to be like leaning forwards over your foot? Like I literally don't know how to do it. Oh, is there one with the foot on the wall? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so let's do it. Let's do it here. So, oh no, let's not do that there. No, nah, it's all right. Let's do it here. We'll do it here, but it's just harder to see. Um, no, nah, that's gonna like definitely move. That's fine. Okay, now when we do this one, hands up if you've got this one in your program where you lean over and you're using the water bag and you're doing this, it's sort of what we were just talking about. So when we're doing this exercise, so I don't wanna mark the wall, so I might just put my foot down here, but some of you might have your foot up on a box, okay? But you can, when, what we're doing is we're trying to make sure that we're getting really strong and working on your muscles in the back of your legs as well as your core. So you're thinking about when you are doing any kind of landing position or if you're doing like a pitch position and you're gonna have to throw, throw an athlete, then 
we really need to make sure that we're using all of our muscles together. We can't just be strong in our hamstrings and expect that we're going to be able to throw an athlete. Does that make sense? So we want to make sure that we're working all of those muscles um, in unison. Okay, so when we've got this exercise, we've got our foot on the wall. We might get you off to do it and I'll explain. Put your foot on the wall. So show me how you do it. Okay. Yeah. So let's use my drink bottle as your water bag. <laughs> A really small water bag. Okay. I love that. Do you feel silly? Yeah. I like it. I'm going to aim to make you all feel silly when you do this. This is excellent. So when we do this, where do you feel it? Show me. Okay, in your calf. Okay, so lean down. So pretend we're getting into a, like a motorbike position, that's it. And I want you to try and be parallel with the floor, that's it. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to keep your knee on line with your ankle, but you're going to lean forward so your weight's more into your toes. Do you feel your hamstrings on yet? Yeah. Yeah. Now, hold that position and now shake as hard as you can. Hold it, that's it. Lean forward a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> Does that feel a little bit more challenging? Mm. Okay, so when we're doing this, the first thing that Yov was doing was she was had her foot on the wall and she was just leaning back, sitting back in her heels and she's like, this feels like nothing. I'm not doing anything. And that's because when do you ever pitch back here? You never do that. So we've got to try and create those positions that we're in when you're actually doing your skills. <laughs> So when you're here, we want to make sure we're leaning forward. So you shouldn't be on toes. You should feel like your whole foot's on the floor, but we want to be leaning forwards until you feel your hamstrings really firing, okay? Then when you go back into training, you can try this and see if you can fall over just like this, okay? Oh. <laughs> so we want to try and make sure that we're really working through your hamstrings. And if you get it done properly, you'll feel like it's pretty hard, okay? So we want to make sure that we're not... Um, you know when we're doing a motorbike position or when you're doing a your pitch, you're quite bent in the knee? This one, you're going to keep your knees a little bit straighter so they're almost straight, okay? Does that make sense? Okay, cool. Any other questions about any of those water bag exercises or does that make more sense? Yes? Anyone? Okay, cool. Well done. You can do it for us. And <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, well, if we have no more questions, that's the end. So good job. <laughs> Thanks for being very interactive. <laughs> Thanks for asking all these questions. <laughs> um, but we'll make sure that everybody gets that presentation. Also, I can chat to you guys about all of those findings with the... Um, screenings and stuff and we can talk through that and sort of make sure that we're adjusting everything so cool guys awesome <laughs> 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 <laughs>